Ancient humans were burying their dead and making symbols. Why are they lying to us about our past? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom. Together we will sweep away the wreckage of their deception and awaken deep and ancient truths. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe right now. It's the only way you can be sure that this information will reach you for the establishment wants you ignorant and distracted. As today's story demonstrates, did you know that hundreds of thousands of years ago, beings similar to us were burying their dead and carving symbols suggesting that they were far are more intelligent than paleoarchaeologists ever presumed. What is the advantage in detaching us from our history? What is the advantage in presenting us with a version of reality that is at odds with the truth? Why is there orthodoxy around subjects like archaeology? Why are the mainstream media so interested in curating our perspective on reality from every conceivable angle? Let me know in the chat and the comments why you think we live in such a curated version of reality. Let's see how the mainstream media reported on this story and what our lovable dimwit numbskull ancestors were up there and why they were making these crazy little graves. A new shock to the scientific world and really to all of us. It is about the mysterious extinct human species Homo naledi. The new discovery suggests that this species may have intentionally buried its dead and carved symbols above the graves on cave walls long before the earliest evidence of burials by modern humans. I suppose the significance of burying your dead is that it indicates a potential belief in the afterlife, it suggests a reverence for life itself. And if these potentially idiot monkey people were having funerals, were they also having piss-ups? Why are they carving symbols? What's the significance of it? What does this tell us about the origins of thought, the origins of language, and the nature of our own ceremonies? Why is it we feel so deracinated and lost and so hopelessly adrift in the world when all of our rituals have become bereft of meaning, when we're told that the only things that matter are the things that we can measure, and our systems of measurement are becoming increasingly unreliable. I don't just mean the institutions of orthodoxy, but our senses themselves are limited. We are all the time uncovering and discovering truths about our shared history that suggest we need to revise not only the present and the way that we live and our systems of power and governance, but our entire perspective on the past. Working in incredibly tight spaces in the Rising Star cave system in South Africa, Africa. A team of researchers last year made these and many other discoveries about this ancient species. And our next guest was part of that expedition. Here he is describing one of the engravings just moments after he discovered it. I can't believe what we're seeing and we're seeing scratch marks. Let me out of that goddamn grave! It's odd to consider that once, a hundred thousand years ago or whenever it was, these funerals, these ceremonies were carried out. And now, down there in the dank and undisturbed darkness might have been a fraction of a second, the graves are being disrupted and disturbed by Curious archaeologists. So, what you call petroglyphs, which are in pictures or, or carvings carved in the rock, but. Look at the scale of these things. They went all that trouble to render those deaths in such a dignified manner, only for him to get out of that ruler and start measuring stuff. And look at this little guy. Call that a dick? Well, I'm so happy that we're joined now by the man. He's definitely styled his wardrobe on Indiana Jones, isn't he? He's definitely gone, well, I'm an archaeologist. I'm going on the news. I'm wearing an Indiana Jones outfit. We had discovered these burials, or we realized we had burials in 2018. We were on this National Geographic expedition. We were down there. I, we, I saw the burials, but I've only ever seen this thing through video and we had these questions over covid and yeah <laughs> we've all got questions over covid mate we could not get, get them answered only 47 humans had ever been in there and so i decided i needed to get in there and testament and when i got in there i started making these discoveries you know our, our missions were always very focused saw those symbols blew my mind. What do you, do you know what they mean? <laughs> do you know what they mean? It's not going to know what they mean. From an archaic species a hundred thousand years ago who are distinct from human beings in numerous ways. Yeah, I think they were saying, can you let me out of this grave? I'm not dead yet. Uh, and this is no, a dumb question, and, but and like, that's what, an important point. how, how is, can you conclude what you think they are? This is not a human species. They have a brain a third the size of ours. Oh, a third. It's extraordinary to think that there was a time where our planet was inhabited by human-like creatures and potentially 
Homo sapiens simultaneously. It's possible to imagine entirely different trajectories for civilization. All of our assumptions around the way that power is organized, the way that our systems operate, are built upon a shared consensual history about the nature of our journey, the way that we arrived here together. It's, it's uh, about the size of a chimpanzee's. And they're carving symbols 150,000 years before humans even think of doing that. They, they look familiar to us. Crosses, boxes, yeah. triangles, hashtags. <laughs> 150,000 years before human beings had language or made symbols, they're using things like triangles and crosses. Does that suggest that there's a deep archetypal intelligence that expresses itself through matter? One of the ideas around the origin of consciousness is that consciousness doesn't emerge from biological processes, but consciousness precedes biological processes. Max Planck, the physicist, said you cannot get behind consciousness. Information like this is a further suggestion that consciousness may predate matter and that there's a certain point in the evolution of a species where consciousness becomes accessible. If you imagine consciousness to be like a signal and a brain to be like a radio, the brain is the recipient of consciousness rather than the generator of consciousness. And the presence of archetypal geometric shapes, there's no reason for the grieving relatives of that monkey man to start conceiving of triangles and crucifixes. It's an extraordinary thing for cameras from Modern Family, Indiana Jones man, to observe that down there, 150,000 years ago, they have references to triangles and hashtags. Hashtag, I'm not ready to go yet. Hashtag, there's a universal consciousness. Hashtag, why is our species about to be wiped out by Homo sapiens? It's extraordinary that they've got access to that. And, and yet, we may never know what they mean. They, they were made for other Noletti, not for us. Right. But one thing we do know that I think that I really took away from what I read about the work that you've done on this is that what you discovered erases the belief in human exceptionalism because of the size of our brains. You know, we have told this story since for thousands of years. Why are we different? We want to make ourselves different. One of the last things we had is this big brain. That just died, just like the Homo Way died, but with this evidence, that died. Why? We are not exceptional. I feel that they're using this news story to further undermine sacredness when it could just as easily be used to elevate the idea of sacredness. Human beings aren't special. We don't have a unique position in the universe. We're just another creature that has its moment and then passes. That may be materially and biologically true. But what's more interesting to me is the idea that species, not entirely abstract from us, but separate from us, had language, had ceremonies, had rituals. That doesn't mean, oh, there's no afterlife and there is no God. That's a further indication that there are mysteries. That's a further indication that consciousness might precede matter. It's at least an indication that there are common archetypal themes that occur to creatures outside of our species. I mean, if you one day discovered that a rabbit could draw spirals or that a weasel drew a silhouette of Mickey Mouse, that would be interesting, wouldn't it, to discover that they have recourse to archetypal imagery, to John to a potential shared language, doesn't that indicate that there are yet more mysteries to be uncovered? At a time when UFOs are being basically proven to be real, it suggests that we are participating in the revision of how we understand reality. That all the time that people that just roll their eyes and tell you, it's just the way it is. This is just the way things have always been. There is no, this is just the way things have always been. There's been a concrete, constructed narrative devised to distract you from the ever-present device and the possibility of altering the way systems are organized at any moment. That all of us individually and collectively have access to layers of reality that aren't immediately evident, but are nevertheless present. Can you explain that more? Yeah, so, so humans have got this narrative that our big brain supercharged us, made us different. Let's do culture, let's do symbols, music, art, all the things that we like to separate ourselves from the animal kingdom. Let's do music, let's do art, let's be our modern family, let's wear this suede jacket, let's go on the news dressed as Indiana Jones and see if I can pick anyone up as a result. Hashtag new indie. And of course, animal studies have shown us, you know, that's not true. Whales do incredible things. Corvids, you know, crows are brilliant. Also, that symbol is rubbish. Just the last desperate bid to play tic-tac-toe before your final gasp. But now we know that neither were we exceptional in that brain. The brain doesn't make us whatever it is we are. We now see Homo naledi doing the things that we held as the only thing we had left. 
250,000 years ago. What interests me about this news report is that it's being used to advance the idea that human beings aren't exceptional. I don't think that human specialness means that we are superior to nature and to the creatures we share the planet and perhaps the universe with. I think it's just evidence of a connection to something sublime, evidence of a connection to something that's difficult to materialise and measure and that ought to be revered, that potentially there are ways to organise reality that are beyond simple reductive materialism. I think a reductive materialist mentality leads to competition, it leads to greed, it leads us essentially where we are now. And even a revelatory and potentially exciting news story like this is quickly repackaged and rehashed to tell you that you're not special, that you're just one of many biological blobs that was born and will expire, and that there aren't latent mysteries accessible to you within yourself that indeed do make you special. Your energy and level of energy and passion tells me that you're not by any means done. What's next? Uh -huh. In terms of your research, you know, I, I, there what is, do you, how do you move is, this forward? Firstly, we're, we're bringing this to the world. We're going to engage the entire scientific community in how to test these hypotheses. This is science. It's ongoing. There's a lot more to discover. We're also going to be asking the world, what do we do with this? What do we do with discovering the first non-human species that had our capabilities? This is a special place to them. They took the dead of their kin mm -hmm. into these remote areas and buried them. What should we do? I think it's a special, it's almost our first contact moment, you know, the, the real oh, first yeah, contact yeah. moment. Paleoanthropologist. Paleo One of the news anchors has been, I'm actually moved, what should we do? Well, we should revere and respect and recognize that we're perhaps participating in a great glorious life, that these people understood and loved death. Paleo, paleoarchaeology, paleoanthropologist. Paleo One news anchor just simply trying once again to pronounce the name of his job. Mr. Lee Berger, thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you, you. thank you for having me. She struggled actually with Lee Berger. Mr. Lee Berger. Congrats on the book. Oh, thank you. Which I haven't read. So there you are. Perhaps we're not alone in the universe, and perhaps our past is entirely distinct, more complex and diverse than we'd ever imagined. And I'll offer you, maybe consciousness is a pervasive, a priori phenomena from which the material world is derived, and that there are archetypal symbols accessible to all of us because we all come from a common source. But that is just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe. It's the only way we can be sure that this content will reach you. More important than any of that is that you please stay free.